All right, Dorian Finney-Smith, I know that it's fast approaching trade deadline. Everybody's going to try to figure out something to do to give him one extra step moving. Shams, a any likelihood, what can we possibly expect from the Mavericks? Well, on, on Luka Doncic, listen, I love his play. Um, I love what he's done. Uh, but it's clear that this team needs help. Like, they need other players to score. Spencer Dewey, he can't just be your second leading scorer at 12 points on a night. Uh, Luka Doncic's usage rating. I I'm just curious from a player perspective, like how much is it that he might not be empowering his other teammates? And the other night, Spencer Dinwiddie did did went off for 30, I think 36 and 7. So they have players that have shown, you know, if you have the ball in your hands, like a guy like Spencer Dinwiddie, we'll see when Christian Wood gets back on the floor, that can at least get, get buckets, can, can score. Um, so how much of it is just the system that's being run right now? We saw in Houston that, that string of, of years where it was literally James Harden, crazy usage rate, crazy numbers, not much success come playoff time. Uh, but this is a team in the Mavericks. They're starting to get involved in the trade market. And one guy, Dorian Finney-Smith, he's probably their, their best asset right now. He's locked in uh, for a few more seasons at a, at a good number. I'm told they've expressed interest to teams that we're open to moving him if it's a deal that could lead to a star. That doesn't mean they're going to trade Dorian Finney-Smith for an all-star. That means they're going to do a deal maybe for draft picks that could end up leading to a star player, um, and, and that's really where the Mavericks' focus has been, is that when you look around this roster, Dwayne Finney-Smith is a foundational piece, but that's probably a guy that you can go and parlay into a player that can add some talent on this team and be a co-star next to Luka Doncic. But listen, he, he became the, uh, just the fourth player to score 50 points four more times in a season. Kobe, Jordan, uh, and Harden. So great company, but he needs, he needs some help for sure. Yeah, and I will say this, you know, I played with James Harden for those two years in Houston and as frustrating as it can be in some times because you, you want more as an athlete, you want more as a competitor, you think that your role should be bigger and, and you could be having these games and be the headliner and as much as I wanted that, I literally left Houston wanting that bigger role. And when I got to Dallas and I was then this kind of second guy there with Dirk, it, it wasn't as sweet. It was not as easy. <laughs> and scouting reports and defenses were keying in on you. So it's easy to get comfortable and take a back seat when you do play with a guy like Luka Doncic or James Harden in Houston. Uh, it's easy to kind of let them kind of rock. And then that's why you kind of look forward and you see these guys have huge games when they go out. And Spencer steps up and has these 35-point games and get the win without him because it just kind of shows that – that's like a statement game for you as a player that I can do more. Like, look at me. It doesn't have to be this Luca show. But on the same side, when, when you got to go do that on a full season as that number one or two option, it's the grass isn't always greener. So it's it, it, it kind of works both ways in a situation like this. And Dorian Finney-Smith, I love Dodo. I think he's the perfect fit for a guy like Luca. He's a three and D guy. We all know Luca doesn't really defend at an elite elite level, and Dorian <laughs> Finney-Smith does. But they do need more help and they need more star power to kind of get them over the edge. But as role players, I'm not giving up Dorian Finney Smith unless it's for something substantial. Wait, I want to I want to stay here for one more second, because Dallas is sort of in a unique situation, at least compared to a lot of other teams, like a lot of teams. Obviously, the whole point is to get better. Right. But not every other team has a superstar like Luka Doncic on it. He's young still. So they have that benefit going for them. But I don't know, Shams, can you? Can you touch on the stress level in the front office for a team like that that knows we cannot waste all of this time trying to figure out who to match up with Luca? Because year in, year out, he's in the MVP talk, but then what? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's, it's strategic stress, right? Because when you look at this Mavericks team, last year they were just in the Western Conference Finals. So I think there was this grand expectation like this team – uh, should be competing for a championship. Of course, they, they'd love to. You lose Jalen Brunson. That's probably a decision. You know, the front office, they could they probably evaluate that 15 times over, right? They could have extended him last year. They chose not to. He ends up walking, probably took that as a slight that they didn't give him an extension, left in free agency, and then they don't really have another player that's really replaced him. They go out and trade for Christian Wood. So you're trying to make moves to keep the, the this this train rolling, but you know that you don't have... Uh, the necessary horses to go win a championship. So I think when you look at into, into the summertime, right now they have very little assets. They have maybe one first round pick that they can trade right now. They'll have a bunch that become available come summertime. So, you know, if you're able to wait for the summer and have three, four first round picks, possibly go trade a Dorian Finney-Smith for even more first round picks and then take all those and kind of like what Minnesota did, 
but but you know hit 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 but, for a bigger player, better. hit for a guy that probably would fit. Yeah, <laughs> you 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 said it, Michelle, not me. But you know, <laughs> go hit for someone that can that can really make a difference. And I think that's where it, it's a balance of patience and actually going for it. It's 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 really what I said at the beginning: Oof. strategic stress. I'll say this too, like uh, it's confusing the last, you know, 10, 15 years. Dallas has never really gotten that big free agent, whether that was with Donnie Nelson or, you know, now, but it's tax free state. Mark Cuban's awesome and can get you into multiple ventures off the court. It's a beautiful city. And now they have arguably the best player in the NBA. So it's, it's, it's time for them to kind of sign that big impact player and kind of take advantage of this Luca time. Yeah. Make a splash. I can't believe I'm saying that. Kind of understand why Taylor's Taylor like on Chandler, Dallas though. now. Wait, what you wait? What you say? <laughs> yeah, oh, you exactly. understood. So that kinda, yeah. I understand why Chandler ended up going to Dallas. I think he, he sold me just now. Dallas I ain't know, so right? bad. It's like, am I in the <laughs> wrong town? I don't, I don't know.